So I'm going to talk about innovation in China, but without any irony at all, okay? So can China innovate? That's the key question here. Everyone hears about Chinese copycats, Chinese Facebook, Chinese Twitter, Chinese Google, right? And the question on everyone's minds then is, can or will China innovate? When will maybe you know, other people in other markets look at and, um, and want Chinese design, Chinese invention? Uh, me, I think it's actually right around the corner. In fact, it's coming right away. I think that if we look at social innovation in particular, you can see that trends are happening where uh, th the amazing transformations are happening to China and within China that will affect its standing in the world. And so with that, I, I, I want to just jump right in and say, you know, what is innovation? And I explain how this is going to happen. Innovation to me is about doing something new, about doing something novel and different. But of course, it has to be with practical application. It's not just new for newness sake. It has to be useful. Innovation, therefore, actually has to find its way into the market and serve a need, what's often called product market fit. Great startups live for product market fit. Their singular pursuit from their beginning is finding a way to justify their existence and fit what is needed in the marketplace. Um, I think this happens when you pair domain knowledge and expertise. Sorry. When you pair domain knowledge and expertise with a passion to find a solution. And in China, unfortunately, we're not seeing that happen enough. Too often we're finding that companies are trying to take foreign models and make them work in China. Uh, too often what happens is we look at other markets and try to take their solutions and make them work here. Just because somebody else is using a hammer doesn't mean you need a hammer. Maybe you need a screwdriver, right? And so what I think really we're looking for now is Chinese companies that can break this mold of taking other people's ideas and trying to make them work here. Too often what's happened is people are thinking about not product market fit, but product VC fit, trying to do something that they think is going to get funded. And they do that because they think that's both the best and safest way to get startup success or get filthy rich. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Even amongst the companies that are copying to China, we've seen thousands of Groupon clones, it doesn't work. More often than not, they'd still lead to failure. Because ultimately, starting up something, taking risks, is about embracing uncertainty. It's about being comfortable with the risk of failure. And it's about doing something brave and new. In fact, therefore, it's much more important that you care about what you do deeply. Why you're doing it matters just as much about as what you're doing. And so if you can transform then into embracing these risks, disregard whether your parents, your friends, your family members, whatever they might think, and then try to embark on new uh, uh, embrace and listening to what's happening in the local market and the local needs, then you have the possibility of actually having real innovation. Unfortunately, too many Chinese startups know how to build something. They know the techniques, they have the technology, they have operational experience, but they don't really know why to build something. They're not committed to the vision and the clarity of, of what to build. But there is hope. There are more and more social entrepreneurs today who, with their definition of success, are embedding impact. And so for them, at their core, they know precisely who they serve and why they're building something. These social entrepreneurs are driven to embrace local needs, engage in design and creation processes, and actually their purposes are so important to them that they're willing to risk failure in a way that the technology entrepreneurs are not. And so in my experience over the last five years, first from my own technology startup where we crowdfunded student loans, and now more recently investing and incubating in new social enterprises, I've seen that passion and commitment makes it possible for young projects to get over the hurdles of the beginning and create real market value. But nevertheless, these social entrepreneurs have the challenge of how to scale. So they, again, come across that problem of technology and operational capacity. Just like the technology entrepreneurs have the challenge of really understanding why they should exist. But I think both things can be taught. And what's more, 
by combining these two communities, I think there's fundamental learning that can happen and we can create real fundamental social innovation. When that happens, we're not gonna just get product market fit, we're gonna go beyond that to product society fit, where the products not only serve customers and shareholders, but actually all stakeholders. And when that happens, what's gonna happen in China is we're gonna find real solutions to Chinese problems using our local knowledge and context. And, and what's more, we're going to find that those solutions that we build for Chinese problems will have relevance around the world, whether it's aged populations and overweight populations in the developed world or poor migrant populations elsewhere. And with that, I think Chinese social innovation has the opportunity to build products and services the whole world will admire, desire, and acquire. Thanks. <laughs>